Good evening, everyone. We are presenting on behalf of uh, Medicine Five. So, uh, presenting Mr. B, a 50-year-old, uh, presented with headache for one month and fever for one month. So, uh, this headache for one month, uh, it was, was holocranial in nature, associated with left-sided ear pain. There was episodes of tinnitus. So, and he had fever for one month, which was low-grade, intermittent. There was uh, no chills or rigors associated. And uh, along with this, he had history of ear discharge. Uh, which was uh, four months back, he had ear discharge, which lasted for four days. It was mucoid, non-fault smelling, and non-blood stained uh, discharge was there. And it resolved spontaneously. After the four days, he did not have any sorts of ear discharge. Past history is a known case of type 2 diabetes mellitus for the uh, you know, diagnosed five years back, but he was not on any medications for the same. So he presented to the emergency department and he was noted to have altered behavior by the ED registrar. He was restless, agitated, was not obeying commands, and there was reduced word output, uh, verbal output. So there was uh, no issue of seizures, vomiting, uh, or loss of consciousness in the emergency department. His vitals at the time were uh, respiratory 20 per minute, a percentage uh, maintaining in uh, room air. Temperature was uh, 96 uh, Fahrenheit, and uh, blood pressure 160 uh, by 100, and pulse rate 84 per minute. Initially, when he presented, the GCS was 15 by 15, and it uh, dropped to 11 by 15, uh, E2V4M5. His GRBS was noted to be 526. So on examination, uh, is, uh, central nervous, examination, nervous system examination, his sensory was fluctuant. Uh, spontaneous eye opening was present. Uh, he had reduced verbal output. And uh, bilateral pupils were reactive to light. There was no nystagmus. Uh, extraocular movements were full. Gag bilaterally present, no facial asymmetry. Uh, uvula was in central and bilateral palatal elevation present. Motor system examination, uh, had 3 by 5 power in all four limbs. And sensory system could not be assessed due to his uh, sensorium. Reflexes were 2 plus in all limbs with bilateral flexor response in the plantar. Uh, cerebellar signs could not be elicited. There was no neck stiffness noted and spinal skull examination was normal and uh, other systemic examination have been normal. So the differentials considered at this point was in uh, encephalopathy, uh, with the differential with a high GRBS level, the metabolic uh, cause was thought, hyperglycemia related, and an infective cause because he had a history of uh, chronic fever with uh, ear discharge in the past, maybe a meningo encephalitis secondary to uh, chronic separative otitis media, lateral sinus thrombosis, these were considered. An initial investigation is hemoglobin was 13.3 and uh, it, uh, he had, uh, had slightly elevated counts, 13,900 with neutrophilic predominance, 80 neutrophils and platelet counts were in the normal range. Serum electrolytes uh, were uh, 135 sodium, 4.6 potassium and 18 bicarbonate. His urea or renal function tests were normal and the sewer analysis showed uh, glucose and ketones uh, plus 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 and hp was 12.8. His arterial blood gas analysis showed uh, acidosis, metabolic acidosis with uh, bicarbonate of uh, 6.7 and uh, pH 7.32. So uh, EG, he had high, high anion gap, metabolic acidosis. Anion gap was 26. So with this, uh, ENT uh, consult was also obtained uh, because of this presentation. He had an outside imaging also, uh, which was suggestive of an uh, otitis media. So we, are, we repeated an imaging here, uh, which uh, with um, MR gadolinium contrast was done. So it showed diffuse sclerotic changes and erosions involving the cleavers, occipital condyles, and petrous part of the temporal bone. And he had a nasopharyngeal abscess also, along with changes of mastoiditis. So the impression was the central uh, skull base osteomyelitis, along with a nasopharyngeal abscess and chronic otomastoiditis. But in the initial investigation was suggestive of a... Uh, hence, uh, he was admitted under medicine for further management. Uh, he was started on management for diabetic ketosis, IV hydration, and insulin infusion was started. Uh, so, course in the ward. Uh, initially, uh, he was treated for a metabolic encephalopathy. The altered sensorium was considered to be predominantly metabolic. And uh, he was uh, getting treated for the DKA. But in the ward, he again uh, had, on day three of admission, he again developed fever spikes. Uh, and this time on careful examination, neck stiffness was noted. So we went ahead with the lumbar puncture, uh, uh, suspecting a probable meningitis. So it showed a very low glucose of 9. Uh, uh, he had concurrent GIV levels of 140, along with high protein, 341. And uh, cell counts were predominantly neutrophilic, 94%. And uh, WBC was 3,500. All this suggestive of a pyogenic meningitis. And other uh, industry cultures are, uh, have been negative. Uh, cultures, CSF, bacterial, TB, and mycobacteria are negative, and uh, viral 
multiplex pieces are also negative. So uh, he was empirically started on meropenem and vancomycin. So the meningitis was thought to be secondary to the skull based osteomyelitis. Initially, the encephalopathy was thought to be due to a metabolic cause, but uh, actually, it is an infective origin. Uh, so, uh, and uh, he was started on antibiotics and uh, ENT consult was obtained and uh, the nasopharyngeal and biopsy was done under uh, uh, general anesthesia. The abscess cavity uh, uh, with uh, necrotic tissue was seen in the posterior naso nasopharynx and the samples were sent for culture. The cultures grew uh, Klebsiella, uh, which was uh, our fancy institute to uh, cephotaxin, ceftazidim uh, and cotrimoxazone. And the biopsy showed superative inflammation uh, uh, in the uh, taken from the uh, biopsy region. So I would like to uh, talk a few words about skull based osteomyelitis. First, it was described in 1959, and uh, skull based osteomyelitis is an uncommon infection with subst substantial morbidity and mortality. And the types are uh, usually uh, malignant arteries externa, causing the typical form of uh, skull based osteomyelitis, which involves a temporal part of the uh, skull bone. Uh, and second one is central or atypical skull based osteomyelitis. Our patient had features of both. And uh, the common organisms that are uh, seen are in bacterial pseudomonas, Staphylococcus aureus, and Klebsiella are possible. And fungal, uh, currently there is a rise in fungal infection in uh, 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 skull based osteomyelitis as a cause. Rhizopus and Aspergillus flavus are some of the cause. So the typical uh, form of skull based osteomyelitis, which is occurs secondary to malignant orthitis externa. So predominantly frontal bone, uh, sphenoidal and temporal bone region and it is uh, almost always due to pseudomonas uh, aeruginosa causing a malignant otitis externa. Now second form that is atypical skull based osteomyelitis involves a typically classical involved clevis. The clevis part should be involved and the organism or uh, uh, bacterial uh, uh, streptococcal and staphylococcus aureus along with fungal aspergillus and uh, candidal infection also possible. So, so the differentiation, as we saw, that uh, the typical SBO is uh, involves a temporal bone predominantly, and central sphenoid and occipital bone often centered on the clivus region. The organism is pseudomonas, and the central uh, SBO, Staphylococcus fungal and graminotic bacilli. So typical uh, skull based osteomyelitis it affects the elderly. Uh, central affects the middle age, like as in our patient, and they are more commonly seen in dia patients with diabetes mellitus and immunocompromised individual or patient on chronic steroids or immunosuppressive therapy are more prone to get these infections. And uh, in typical form, uh, there are otorrhea and otalgia are severe with pain out of proportion to the physical findings and uh, hearing loss is possible. In central, in our patient, uh, mostly he did not have a very severe uh, uh, otalgia or uh, ear symptoms and he had headache, chronic headache and other uh, facial pain, cranial neuropathies are very much common in uh, uh, central skull base osteomyelitis with sinonisal symptoms in 25 percentage. The cranial most commonly involved in typical skull based osteomyelitis is uh, seventh nerve and central uh, skull based osteomyelitis is seventh, uh, sixth, ninth, tenth uh, or more common than seventh. So uh, this is an article published uh, by our general medicine department uh, uh, three years back and it shows the clinical ca characteristics and complications of skull based osteomyelitis, a 12 year study uh, done in CMC Vellore. So here uh, uh, we uh, uh, so 40, 42 patients were uh, characterized and out of them, the most common symptom was headache and second is fever, both of which our patient had and loss of weight. And all these, most of the patient had uh, a complicated associated risk factor of diabetes mellitus with autogenic SBO, uh, that is a typical form had 96% and the non-autogenic form had 81% had diabetes mellitus. And uh, along with this, other uh, recent surgeries, hypertension, insulin usage, these are other risk factors associated. And uh, complications of uh, skull based osteomyelitis, cranial nerve palsies were uh, very much common in skull based osteomyelitis, along with second meningitis. So, our patient uh, had meningitis, which was a complication uh, that was early uh, suspected early. And uh, because of the lumbar puncture, then early we are able to identify the CNS infection. And other complications are cerebral venous thrombosis, uh, subdural abscess, cerebritis, brain abscess. These are the uh, following complications. And the uh, outcomes are uh, usually it is still. Uh, has higher more high mortality rate 24 percent noted in our uh, study uh, along 24 percent in the autogenic SBO group and 18 percent in the non-autogenic group and often they will requ require surgical debridement and uh, that will also add up to the morbidity 
why diabetics are prone to all these infections uh, diabetes is the most important risk factor for the development of skull based osteomyelitis and diabetics have increased interleukin 1 beta and macrophage inflammatory protein 2 secretion so what this is this there uh, this leads to persistence of macrophages in the pro inflammatory stage as diabetes itself is a pro inflammatory stage rather than uh, transforming into a pro healing form these macrophages are stuck in the pro inflammatory forms and resulting in impaired phagocytic function which uh, leads to impaired clearance of the back uh, organisms from the uh, host and diffuse microangiopathy and alkaline serum and also predispose these diabetics to uh, skull based osteomyelitis so in those in those patients the cul culture samples are, are obtained from the biopsies and the pathogenic organism we are able to identify in 61 percentage of the patients and the common uh, flora that were identified here was staphylococcus aureus was the most common second was pseudomonas aeruginosa and third was uh, klebsiella uh, and uh, in all 40 percentage of uh, had fungal infection also with rhizopus and aspergillus flavors being uh, the common organisms so our patient had klebsiella and uh, there are uh, klebsiella uh, causing uh, meningitis uh, secondary to skull based osteomyelitis has been uh, very rare and few case reports have been uh, uh, reported uh, and uh, these are notorious to produce very rapidly progressive disease uh, leading to uh, and has high mortality rate uh, these two case studies are able to uh, find and uh, uh, because our, these pa patient can also have very resistant klebsiella also our patient had uh, sensitive klebsiella in this case studies they, they had very resistant klebsiella oxa 48 carbapenemase uh, uh, producing klebsiella and uh, had increased mortality rate so our patient after uh, the sensorium was uh, 11 uh, and it was also dropping dropped to 7 in the ward after the initiation of antibiotics there was dramatic response in his sensorium uh, after starting antimicrobial therapy he was initially started on Empirically started on uh, meropenem and vancomycin to cover pseudomonas and MRSA. Uh, and uh, after the sensitivity, we uh, converted to ceftriaxone uh, and was uh, planned to continue for six weeks. And the sensory improved. He had no focal deficit, no cranial nerve involvement was seen in our patient. So the learning points are klebsiella infection can progress rapidly. So early initiation of appropriate antibiotics improves survival. So you should have a high index of suspicion in these patients. Antibiotics in a patient with skull based osteomyelitis should cover for pseudomonas, it's a, since it's a very common organism, and uh, uh, methicillin, methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus and fungal infections, since it also has a significant uh, contribution to these infections. Thank you. Thank you, Narendra. Any questions? Uh, since it was sensitive, uh, we didn't check for a uh, hypervirulent uh, organism. Okay, going back after reading your article, did you look for any cranial nerve involvement, cerebritis, cortical venous thrombosis in your patient again? And this patient, um, we did not have uh, initially uh, in the sense of sensory was, uh, uh, was poor. We could not assess, uh, com do the complete sensory, uh, uh, complete cranial nerve examination. But after the recovery, he did not have any deficits. He was completely normal. Um, we were able to walk around the ward in sensorium, dramatically improved after two days of antibiotics. Meningitic dose was started. Questions? Yes, thank you. And we move on to the last presentation for today by medicine from Dr. Amrita Pariyanathan on the title.